I'm going to show a quick um, demonstration of uh, properly working oxygen sensors. Um, this is like a 2007 GMC van. Um, so um, keep in mind, uh, any information on this pertains to um, just regular oxygen sensors, not wideband uh, air fuel sensors. Um, you might see the, these referred to as a lambda uh, sensor. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, so what you're looking at here is on the right side, um, you're seeing bank, let's start, bank one, sensor one. So sensor one is <clears throat> before the cat, okay? Um, this has two banks, so you think of like dual exhaust. This is bank two, sensor one, right? So these on the right side are the oxygen sensors before the cat, okay? <clears throat> and then down here you can see um, bank one, sensor two. That is post cat, and again the other the other bank bank two sensor two post cat. So obviously, just even if you didn't know anything about um, oxygen sensors, you would expect the um, you know you would s suspect that some information would correlate. So you would think the two um, pre cat sensors would kind of look the same, and you would think the uh, two post cat sensors would look the same. So. Um, and really that's what diagnostics is about. So if I just do a snap throttle, right? Now there's a little delay on the data. Let me give it a little revy rev. Okay. So you can see my, um, post cats, uh, went down, you know, right there. Okay. Now what's that information mean? We'll, we'll get into that. But, um, so you can see they're pretty much working properly because what are the chances of all all four sensors failing, right? You know, they're all kind of doing the same thing. Yes, the pre-cats are doing their own thing and the post-cats are doing their own thing, but that's due to their placement in the system. So what do these numbers mean? So this is voltages in millivolts, okay? And you can kind of see the center line on all of them at 500 millivolts. So you could call that a half a volt, okay? Certain emissions need to be, to burn out, to get a clean clean burn of the emissions the system needs to be in a rich condition but there's certain emissions that will not um, be burned off under a rich condition and it has to be a lean condition so what the system has to do is actually <clears throat> read the oxygen sensor see if it's rich and then drive the fuel drive the fuel uh, lean okay the air fuel ratio lean so anything below 500 millivolts a half a volt is a lean condition anything above 500 millivolts is considered a rich condition um so you're looking basically at a at like a one volt range now sometimes you can go a little over one volt uh in, in certain scenarios okay um so what's happening here is the computer is actually reading the air fuel ratio through the oxygen sensor the oxygen sensor um actually is creating its own voltage um oh, hold on and feeding it back into the ecm it's reading it and then the ecm is adjusting accordingly driving the air fuel ratio rich or lean to make this line go ab ab above and below that 500 millivolt line uh, the term you may see if you're looking up is stoichiometric, and that's like a, the lean burn. That's like a theoretical, uh, a clean, the cleanest burn you can get. Okay. Now it could do that. It could keep this down more the center line, but then you wouldn't get a really good. Um, your your emissions would go down. It needs to do that on purpose. So why is this more erratic? So basically, you can think of the cat as like a damper. This is before the cat. Um, this is the air fuel ratio after it, um, before the cat, but then the cat's burning off some exhaust gases, um, on its own. And these oxygen sensors also have heaters in them that help them read better. There's usually a 12 volt signal, um, that's, uh, duty cycle driven and to control the temperature, um, of, of the oxygen sensor tip. Um, so it's kind of neat. You can see, you know, and you can do snap throttle tests. Sometimes you can restrict the fuel and see it go lean. Um, 
you know, and this is an easy way to tell if you're having a poor running engine just by looking at your oxygen sensor uh, maps if, uh, you know, that might be the culprit. Now, what happens is if you look at your long-term trim, your fuel trims are basically, let's say, zero trim would be um, the computer has like a base map of how much fuel, uh, what the air fuel ratio should be. Now, if we have a restriction and it's noticing we're more in the lean condition, your fuel trim is going to go add and it's going to start adding a percentage. And the and what happens is <clears throat> your short term trim is always trying to get your long term trim to zero. Okay, so right now our long term trim is at nine. Okay. Um, and our short-term trims are adjusting a little by little. Um, you know, that's taking away some fuel, and then it may add some fuel. We're in closed loop, which means we're we're adjusting each way. Where we're using the sensors um, information, and then we're you're reacting to the sensors. So it's a closed loop. Um, so uh, scanner can be very useful. Um, and I just want to kind of want to make some sense. People always hear the word oxygen sensor. That's kind of a a common term that most uh, backyard mechanics know. So there you go. There's an oxygen sensor. Well, there's four of them. Adios.